This is the farm of the late Paul Barcy and his son, Paul Jr., successful cattle ranchers of Ferndale, Washington, seven miles southeast of Birch Bay, close to the Canada-U.S. border. In 1966, Intelco built an aluminum smelter one and a half miles from their farm. By 1968, the Barcys noticed that many of their animals were becoming debilitated, but they didn't realize until many months later that it was the fluoride emissions from Intelco's smelter which were poisoning their cattle, causing damage to plants and in some cases killing their trees. In 1970, they commissioned the late Dr. C.C. C. Gordon, head of the botany department, University of Montana, to conduct a study in preparation for a damage suit against Intelco. This mandible on the left was from a cow brought to the Barcy farm after the two incisors had formed. These teeth are the only ones not poisoned. The rest are poisoned by fluoride and are worn down to the nerves making it extremely painful for the animal to eat or to drink cold water. On the right, we have a cow exposed from birth on the Barcy farm, and as you can see, all the teeth are worn down to the nerves. Here the cows are drinking as a dog would drink, trying to warm the water with their tongues to lessen the pain of cold water against exposed nerves. For comparison, the cow drinking on the left has normal teeth, and is sucking in water in the normal way. This is a side view of the lower jaw of an animal exposed from birth. Some teeth are completely worn down to the gums. These 8 millimeter films were taken by Paul Barcy Jr. and were used in the Barcy's suit against Intelco. You can see that these animals find it very painful to walk. This is caused by the bony outgrowths on the bones called exostosis and the calcification of the ligaments. The case went to court in 1972 and the Barcys were awarded $83,000 in damages. They felt this was an insufficient award and decided to appeal. The appeal court was held in 1975 and they were awarded $177,150, as follows. Discomfort and annoyance, Paul Barcy Sr., $125,000. Discomfort and annoyance, Paul Barcy Jr., $25,000. Damage to cattle, $18,150. Loss of use of property, $9,000. There have been many similar awards for fluoride poisoning. One award of special interest took place in Portland, Oregon on October 15, 1957. Despite the assistance of seven other companies, including Alcoa, Kaiser, and Harvey Aluminum, the Reynolds Metal Company was forced to pay Paul Martin and family $30,000 for personal injuries caused by fluoride gases discharged by Reynolds Aluminum Smelter at Troutdale, Oregon. These bones are from Icelandic sheep, who died in conjunction with the fluorine emissions from the activity of the volcano Hecla in 1845. This bone abnormality is called exostosis. In the early 1900s, two dentists, Drs. Black and McKay, wanted to know what was causing the disfigured teeth of the people drinking the artesian water in the arid areas of the southwest United States, such as Texas and Colorado. It wasn't until 1931 that they confirmed that it was the natural fluoride in the water that was causing this dental fluorosis, also known by the names Texas teeth and Colorado brown stain. It was also during this time that two scientists, Professor Fleming Muller and Dr. S. V. Goodjonson, had already found and described chronic fluorine poisoning among Danish cryolite workers. In 1937, Dr. Ka Rohom published his monumental study of chronic fluoride poisoning after the Danish government commissioned him in 1932 to study in-plant cryolite workers who were suffering from fluorosis, fluoride poisoning. The ore was mined in Greenland and shipped to Denmark for sale to the aluminum smelting industry, 
who used it for refining aluminum. Dr. Roholm reviewed all the literature on fluorine intoxication up to that time and did numerous clinical studies. Cryolite is sodium aluminum fluoride. It contains 54% fluorine, a pale, yellow, highly poisonous gas. Under normal circumstances, the ore is relatively insoluble. But Roholm found that the workers were swallowing the dust, and the hydrochloric acid of the stomach made it more soluble. The fluoride is absorbed into the bloodstream through the intestines. Some is excreted, principally by the kidneys, and the rest is taken out of the general circulation and deposited in the bones, as are other toxic substances such as lead, mercury, and strontium-90. Gaseous fluoride can also be absorbed through the respiratory system and through the skin. Here we have a picture of dental fluorosis. Upper left, a normal dentition. The others are the teeth of the children of female cryolite workers. The children were suckled for long periods, one to two years, and were poisoned through the mother's milk. This is an example of osteosclerosis, over-mineralization of the columna. The normal spine is on the left. Note the gap between the vertebrae. The center picture is osteosclerosis of the second phase. Here the ligaments are partly calcified. Extreme right is the third phase. Even the cartilage between the vertebrae is partly calcified. This is osteosclerosis of the final stage. Note the vertebrae are all fused together in one solid bone. This is a male cryolite worker employed for 12 years. He has no mobility of the spine, and this condition is called poker bank. Cryolite for the aluminum industry is now made synthetically from fluorospar, calcium fluoride. This picture was taken from the film Skeletal Fluorosis, produced by the late Dr. Amjit Singh. These are spines in cross-section, the normal on the right. Note the spinal canal. The one on the left has the canal almost completely closed by bony outgrowth. This osteosclerosis was caused from drinking naturally fluoridated water. Most artesian waters that contain fluoride naturally also contain excessive amounts of calcium and or magnesium. They're both antidotes to this poison and help to buffer the harmful effects. Such is not the case in this area of India where this study is taken and dietary deficiencies of the natives compounds the problem. We now know that aluminum smelters can be major sources of fluoride pollution, but they're not alone. All the smelting industries, lead, zinc, copper, steel, etc., can be a source of fluoride pollution, either from the ore or the use of fluorospar, calcium fluoride, as a fluxing agent. Fluoride dusts and gases are emitted to the atmosphere by many types of industrial operations. These include the manufacture of fiberglass, kiln firing of brick and ceramic materials, melting of raw materials in glass making, and use of fluoride-containing chemicals for cleaning, etching, and electrolytes.